Hello. Uh, a few people have asked about uh, a full demonstration of how to build something using wire app from start to finish. So uh, I've, it's, it's a while ago since I did anything on this, but I've not come up with anything to actually build that's practical. That's, it won't be just putting components in the board for the sake of it. Um, but this is something I've been meaning to do for a bit for a completely different project which is demonstration on uh, multiplex driving for displays and whatever. Um, and I realise that's suitable to do using wire up parts. Uh, I mean, this at the moment, all I've done is drop the bits in this piece of strip board to figure out where to put them with a bit of spacing. Uh, at the moment, nothing at all is soldered, nothing's cut. Um, everything's just, just dropped, dropped through the holes and that's it. Um about dropping things. So uh, this is the circuit I'm working to I come up with. It's fairly simple. I'm using a STM32 little blue blue pill module because they're one of the cheapest you can get that's got a suitable number of pins and easy to program without anything expensive. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. The cheapest to program without anything expensive or extra. Oh, you, know, you can get a complete kit with one of those on the programming device you need for less than £10. And again, rather than using discrete transistors for the drivers on the high side, I'm using uh, an MIC 5891, which is a serially loaded high voltage driver. Uh, it'll operate on anything up to 50 volts. Uh, there's another reason for that as well, which I'll go through later. Um, I mean, one of the things is, these are 3.3 volt CPUs. They can run on 5 volt input, but they've got a voltage regulator and the, and the pin voltage is only 3.3 volts. 3.3 volt outputs from the regulator and um, trying to drive anything above that either means two transistors like an NPN driving a PMP to drive act as the pull up or some kind of IC driver and rather than uh, 16 transistors with a load of resistors you can use that uh, and just the segment current limiting resistors and the cathodes are driven with transistors, so there'll be six six discrete transistors on it. I'm using sill and dill resistor packs. Again, it's not necessary, but they can go in sockets, so I can wire up them, which is a lot better for this demonstration than having to hand wire loads of discrete components, which are then not nothing to do with wire wrapping. So those those are 4.7k resistors, eight, eight, eight resistors in a single line package with a common at the pin one end. Uh, so you can tie the common to other power or ground as uh, pull up or pull down resistors. And I've got two of them, the common on that one's there, the common on that one's there. So basically what I'm doing is uh, duplicating the standard bottom left corner ground and top right corner power on many ICs. And that's the 330 ohms for the base drive. And the uh, blue pill there, and then there'll be the displays, six, six digit displays, just uh, these cheap LEDs, sub segment LEDs. Be six digits, plug in there uh, with uh, a space between them, or space between each pair, should I say, to make them stand out a bit more for the hours, minutes, seconds. So one of the first things to do is, uh, well, if you're going to do it from scratch, the first thing to do is figure out where you're putting everything that comes up with a reasonable layout. Now I need space there for the buttons, which is why that's offset, because it needs the setting buttons. And there's going to be four buttons, which are up there on the circuit. The four buttons for our setting clock, and it's also going to have a, a battery on it. Which Lost. Oh, so. um, this is a salvage 
holder he was on another prototype and it's a little lithium cell holder which can go somewhere as the backup supply to the real-time clock which is part of the STM32 IC so we don't need a separate IC with that which is quite nice not used that before but uh, that should be okay and um, with, the, with the main power off it's very low consumption microamps consumption so you've got a good standby time so that's it. the next thing to do is start cutting tracks to isolate all the bits that shouldn't be connected and then uh, look at uh, start soldering things in I'm not going to do everything in real time because uh, it's quite tedious and obviously the cut track cutting depends on what you're building and how you're doing it and what the circuit board you're using even I mean I a lot of the time when I can I use these um, IC prototyping boards that have got well they've got a full size copper ground plane on the top to start with so you've got the good grounding everywhere and they've got uh, power and ground buses and individual connections for each pin effectively so the, there's not so much track cutting to it it's just a matter of solving parts in uh, the one exception is when you're doing really high density stuff which is the most typical thing I use wire wrap for when I'm putting ICs between ICs where they're not supposed to go then you've got to start cutting all the middles of all the little link tracks but other than that you can see most of the pins aren't soldered in this you just solder the ones that you need for power and ground and hold the sockets in basically or any of them got analog connections or other, other resistance connections to them like there's a few odd resistors around there so wherever they go to have got to be soldered right okay so that's basically the introduction I'll get on with some track cutting in this and then uh, continue when I've got it something like right and it basically these because the track I've got the tracks vertical so I'm not cutting between pins on anything but it does mean every every track between uh, between every item and between the rows on every item unless both top and bottom pin happen to be the same connection need cutting so there's a lot of cutting to do on that um, I'll be using a, an old Vero spot phase cutter which is well I've got a couple of things actually if I put my hands on it there's one there now that's the really old one that's an early one which I've had for literally I don't know must get on probably 50 years <laughs> it's got one I got during the 70s that's what I've used originally um, now that's as well as being looking a bit worn especially to look at the color of the camera uh, it's got no lead on it a top rake as a cutting bit it's more like it just scrapes it out and that does tend to leave especially now because it's blunt um, significant burrs on the copper so the slightly newer design is basically a drill bit in a handle uh, I've already got it out and put it somewhere it's hiding under the contents of the drawer oh there it is it's hiding and that's uh, so it's the same style handle but it's just effectively a short drill bit oh, it's actually got something on it there 3.5 yeah, it's a three and a half mil drill bit. You can just use a bare three and a half mil drill bit, especially a good sharp one like a cobalt steel one. You can just just twist in your fingers. I often do that if I'm just if that's the first thing I pick up. And all you do is just um, to go random hole, some random holes. I'm going to try and look at the camera so it's a little bit weird. Just give it a couple of turns, and then finish off with a couple of turns at light pressure and it takes the copper out you do want to run over that with just with your fingernail or scraper or something just to finish it off and get the burrs off because there will still be occasional burrs but so it's not quite as bad with this one as with the other one where else do I need to do? Oh, between those those are all, all got to come out those have all got to come out one way along A little bit of it so you can see what's involved. 
it's a lot harder trying to do it looking through the camera than it is looking straight at the board. Also, once I got, I'd usually do the corners and then take the IC out or the IC socket out to do all the intermediate ones so there's no risk of catching the pins. That's what I'm doing now. Uh, if I scrape that off, you can see there's loads of uh, bits of swarf and uh, burrs and everything on there. I just push it back a bit. So I'll do the other side. It's strictly essential, but uh, it identifies the socket position better if the pins have got to fit exactly around it. So there's quite some burring and tear, tear in there. So it's difficult to get it back in the correct hole location uh, for a minute. So see that's you can see there that's uh, that's actually uh, I think been putting too much pressure on because I've been doing it at a weird angle. I've gone way too deep. I'm just about taking it out to the pins, which because it's been wire rather than soldered, it doesn't matter. But they need all the burrs just scraping off. So there's no shorts between the tracks. Yeah, so I'll do this normally, the way I, do, uh, the way I generally do it on bench, rather than <laughs> through the, looking at the camera now. As I say, I'm, I'm using too much pressure doing all that, and it's tearing the tracks up more than I need to. So just mark the corners on these. Can't see much behind now that I'm doing this. Just mark the corners, and then I can take them out and work on them. And then afterwards, I can go around and uh, split between the different positions. so much te tearing or burring up on it because I haven't been putting as much pressure on. It still needs a bit of deburring sometimes, there'll be odd, odd bits, but oh, you just you know, that bit, no, it's just dust in it. But um, you see it's a lot neater when I do it like that with a bit less pressure and take a bit more, more time over it. So anyway, I'll carry on doing that, Split all, I've got to split up between pretty much all the pins because I don't think there's anything connected crossways except Actually, the centre pins on these displays are the cathodes. Um, pins three and eight, which are the center, top and bottom centre pin, are both the cathode, so you can use either or both, so they don't actually need splitting. And they'll act as markers to, as to where the displays are fitted when I'm wiring this side. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit like that and then carry on on the video. Okay, that's about the halfway stage. I've got the inside of each one open out so there's no shorts side to side within the devices. The displays, as I said, I've left a space to separate the pairs of digits, and on that one that where the space is, I've taken all the uh, track out to identify it, and the centre of each digit, I left the track in. Now uh, this is something you can quite often get with the uh, strip board. The holes aren't exactly centred in the tracks, they're just slightly nearer this edge than they are that edge. Which means when you cut with a tool that centres, it takes one side of the track out before the other. And it's very easy, there's a bit of swarf there, it's very easy 
to leave that little tiny bit in there on that where it's uh, seen there it's very easy to get an almost invisible short and obviously you can get these bits of swarf which are a pain once I take this out completely I'm just kind of now actually how I centered it you can, once, once it's flat out you can feel all those bits of swarf that's uh, causing problems or could cause problems I'm just uh, scratch them off See bits falling off there and scratching it. There's still some more bits around here. Just gonna scratch back and forth with a uh, fingernail, a bit of uh, plastic or something. And even metal that's going to dig in. A bit of plastic that will uh, just twist them back and forth and it'll break off. And then Oh, you can see that's the pile of bits are removed so far, most of it. So the next stage is to split somewhere between each pair, each pair of devices so there's no shorts through there. I'll probably leave some continuous tracks in for power on ground, just for convenience, uh, for connecting things to. But, um, I mean, on this, this because it's a module and resistors mainly. There's uh, not going to be many discrete components on it. I might add a, a couple of decoupling capacitors somewhere. But normally when I'm uh, building logic, as well as to think of it, uh, I actually put capacitors in under the ICs inside the socket bodies. So every IC on there will have underneath it, or somewhere next to it, depending on the pins, uh, at least one ceramic capacitor. You can't again. You just can't see that because they're, they're too tight down. You can see somewhere probably solder joints. You can see down the centre there. There's um, you see the joints where the capacitors are. You can see through the wire. There's some there. So basically, there's a, a capacitor across power and ground. I mean, because of this layout, they can be side to side from the power pin to the ground plane. But you can use long lead ones and uh, on strip board and just stretch the leads from one corner to the other, just inside the socket and solder them to the same corner as you solder the thick chip down with, or whichever pins it's, it's appropriate. Anyway, carry on. Um, I'll separate these out and then we'll start actually putting the sockets in and uh, wiring.